Hello, so today I thought I'd speak a bit about my quick foray to game composing for a friend's video game. So, some quick information. I've wanted to do some game composing for a long while, but I haven't really had a good opportunity since you, you know, you need a game. So, and I knew a few of my friends were like developers, but it never occurred to me that I could just be like, hey, you do a music for your game. Oh, you don't. Well, let me make some. So here's an example of my latest piece at the time of this recording. Um, it's with some lobby music, kind of in the style of Scott Joplin. It loops. So, the kind of deal with this kind of music is you just kind of have to. Well, I'm just not used to working with that kind of loops and this kind of restrictions. It's fun, but my instinct is to like develop something over a long time, kind of like sonata style, since I'm more of a classical composer. So, like developing motives and stuff like that. Not to say that that doesn't happen in other styles of music, but this is much more restricted that you have to make an impact and improve the experience in a very short time without getting annoying which is <laughs> actually surprisingly challenging one other thing is like is there like going to be repeating thing things or like themes or motives so like and what that basically means is how do you need some something catchy like Many games have like classic tunes. For example, you know, Doom has the classic like and people are like, hey Doom. And like Mario has a bunch of these. Like just think of like when someone says Mario Bros, you know, what kind of music comes to mind? Probably a ton of pieces. I'm not gonna try and sing any of them because I would fail miserably, just like I did then. Like now, anyway, and I basically decided very fairly quickly, kind of by accident, on a theme which was uh, just rising octave and a descending um, chromatic scale. So do 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 do, and that's actually from a solo double bass and an earlier piece of mine, basically. And I just like the theme so much; it's fun to play. And I'm a bassist, so I kind of just want the bass line to be fun to play because that's a rare treat. So, another thing, basically, another thing that I've had to do is make some kind of themes that people be make that are recognizable, catchy, but also like work by looped. So, kind of, I've come up with these two chord ramp um, things. For example, the mini music is just the two chord ramp and the uh, basic. Um, one of the level themes since the game has like level level like kind of backgrounds kind of level styles and I need to make music for each of those um, they kind of have um, they're gonna have each of their own music so if you play the same game mode but in a different like style of background the music is gonna be different to match the aesthetic of the visuals. Hope that makes sense. Basically, this is like the basis, the base level theme, like the, like that everything else is gonna be based on. Like people have to hear this and be like, oh yeah, that sounds like every other thing, because this is the basis for all of the level themes. Anyway, in a rambling, more music, please.
And once again, it loops. So basically each, nearly all of the tracks have to loop in some form. Because otherwise it's like, for certain things we don't know when the gameplay is gonna start and when it's gonna end, so it has to be loopable. And that's one other thing, like, usually when I make music it's to be played once, like, oh, one time, like it's a one time performance, straight through. But like, for a video game that's like, like a purpose, kind of like dance music, you just kind of have to bend to the wheel of the purpose, you just can't do what you want. Which is a nice restriction, but also like, kind of makes me, to be honest, kind of makes me feel bad for video game composer sims. Often their works might be like relegated to the background, like of course, for every like thing that's related to the background, there's other things, things that are the focal point. What if whatever game they are like, whatever game they're like, basically, there's gonna be tracks that will be gonna be remembered and be, can be iconic, and others that kind of stay in the background. And these thing three themes that I've played so far, this gonna be just in the background while you play or something. But the last two themes or pieces, more like, that I gonna play for you, they play when a specific thing happens, which is also a new thing for me. Like usually, there isn't a specific context for a piece, and and uh, like the closest thing I could think of is like um, a wedding march. Is you know exactly what's gonna happen. You know the thing like you know someone's gonna march to the altar, and then the music is gonna stop. So yeah, but anyway. Back to the background music, this is the so-called menu groove, which also has an extended version that's going to be on the original soundtrack so people can listen to it at home. And so yeah, this is just an ABA loop, but it, actually I think it just, just has the A section, because even ABA is way too long, because why bother making it that long if people are not going to be AFK in the fucking menu for like five years. To actually hear both the A section and the B section. Anyway, mini music time. Oh, I lied, it actually has the B section. But it used to be, the format used to be, um, it used to be A, 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 B, B, A, A, but now it's just A, B, A. And once again, it loops, as it should. So, like, <laughs> I'm really happy with this one. It's fun to play. I can play the extended version some other time, but I'm more want to focus on the actual music that's gonna be in game. So this kind of is a good moment to talk about the style of the game. And from what I've seen, it was a kind of cartoony, something like similar to Polybridge, just like low poly models and stuff like that. So I wanted to communicate a certain kind of whimsy and kind of playfulness. So and I let it jazzy rhythms and like funky bass grooves so yeah and actually about that style of music my friend actually that's not where all these decisions came from um, my friend uh, when asked what kind of music he wanted to he wasn't said he wasn't sh sure which is completely understandable I just like he had to on the spot tell me like kind of figure out like figuring out on the spot what kind of aesthetic you want for your game sounds or like music is a bit of an impossible task since it's a pretty much an impossible task since if you haven't thought about it before you're not gonna come up with it on the spot so it's just like okay well what style of music like would you like like Fall Guys music and I suggested Fall Guys because I knew it was a party game and Fall Guys is kind of like a party game it's like a casual 
party game, so... Not quite... You get the idea. Not quite a party game, but something similar to Fall Guys, you wanted. So... Basically, what I found out, realized is that... Um, Fall Guys music, or at least a lot of the music, has like a really funky bass. And this is not quite the same, but it has the same kind of syncopation. And <laughs> I guess harmony. Uh, to be honest, I'm not a funk composer. I just took like the surface level cliches, to be honest, and kind of appropriated them for my music. I'm not sure if anyone would call this actual funk, but it's funk inspired. And I think I made those accents are a bit too much. Since this is meant to be in the background, and those are kind of like punching me in the face. And you don't want that. You don't want that for your menu music. So those are just kind of background music, like even then, it, like gameplay is happening, but it's like, it has, it is dynamic. It's always gonna be the same and you're not gonna know, you're always gonna know, or you're gonna hear this, you're gonna hear this. Whereas these happen when, these music, <laughs> next two pieces I'm gonna play, they play when a specific event occurs. And in this case, it's losing. And another challenge I had here is fitting an interesting and complete musical idea in a very short space. So the the you lost card, like the screen, lasts for seven seconds, and I had to make <laughs> like an interesting phrase that could be also be loopable for that last seven seconds. And <laughs> luckily, I had an idea that worked worked with it. I had this like. Do 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 and they kinda improvised around that just like a rising thing back bringing us back to the same theme and then I realized hell wait that's way too fucking slow and also added even like an intro but then I realized hold on seven seconds that's <laughs> like while I was showing the <laughs> music to the developer he's like hold on so the you know like the <laughs> You lost screen, it's only seven seconds. So, like, what's the point? Is the music supposed to start? I was like, holy fuck, right. So, I had to calculate the tempo to make it so that seven bars is exactly seven seconds. Actually, eight bars is exactly seven seconds. And it came out to about 274. According to it, it was 274. And so, basically, when you lose, you hear this. Once again, it loops. This is a very short loop since, you know, seven seconds. And I actually made an intro, but there's no point in an intro since it's so, it's so short. Like, seven seconds. You don't need an intro for seven seconds. The intro itself is, has to be like half a second. So, yeah, this is, this is kind of just pointless. At least for the video game purpose. I, I want to perform this at one point. I want to make like a medley of. Like a concert of these, all of these pieces, in a more final and performable form. So that's why most of these actually have some kind of intro, some kind of ending. So because we can't just loop it forever, because then, <laughs> then the concert will never end. So yeah. Um, also about the instrumentation, you might have noticed that there's an oboe here, whereas in the previous tracks, tracks there was only piano, drum, bass, and I kind of wanted to bring most of you, my musician friends in this. I know uh, an oboist, so I was like, hey, maybe I could give them something to play. So I was, at first I was gonna put this on the bass, but then I was like, no, let's give some other instru instrumentalists the time to shine. So yeah, and also just some logistic stuff. It's like, since I want these, each of these to be actually recorded acoustically in a studio, not just be MIDI in the game, because, I don't know, I like playing with other people, and acoustic music is the fucking best. But that's kind of a death sentence also, since that's way more work. But to be honest, I just like the process, so I didn't really mind. Whereas for some other people who don't have any contacts, like, this kind of approach to recording everything acoustically isn't really available, so I'm really privileged in that sense. Like, I had nine years of musical education, 
Um, in a music academy, so I have I'd had plenty of time to make friends with other musicians. So I know, like, and even if I don't know a certain person who plays an instrument, I can just ask another one and be like, hey, do you know? And they're usually like, hey, yeah, I, I know this guy. And then that's actually how I got the drummer. Well, I got, I've been messaging. Anyway, like, anyone, just every, everybody can get, like, actual musicians. And if they're not, like, if they're actual professionals, it's going to actually cost a lot to go to the studio, record all these pieces, and, like, do it well. So it's it's not an option for everyone. But acoustic recording, like studio recording, is fairly available to me since I can also use the resources at my music academy um, I wanted to do it and also like if you're gonna rehearse them for the concert acoustically might as well record them for the actual game acoustically anyway and also it's it's just nice to get like better sounding versions of the pieces so yeah but the logistic stuff okay final theme that I'm gonna show you today it's the victory theme and this <laughs> had a very interesting struggle that I actually uh, I sh I'm starting to stream all of these so I can examine them later like stream the uh, composing process and <laughs> this actually too far originally like if you listen to this hard enough it, it like in this context of course you see it in 3-4 and you're like oh that's in 3-4 but ori originally it was in 2-4 So one and two and one and oh. so do 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 anyway it was in two but then I realized I, I wanted like the piano kinda wanted to be in three even though the piece was in two and I was like but the melody the melody is in two that makes no sense but then I realized actually the melody isn't in two there's just I like an ink, like a pickup that totally messed me up. And that's weird because I came up with this melody. I didn't even realize this was a pickup. But it definitely is a pickup. Anyway. might actually be even too long. <laughs> Since I'm sure if, if the vict if the loss off screen is seven seconds, uh, I bet the victor screen is also seven seconds. So I need to make this even shorter. <laughs> so like you can see my instincts are totally working against me. Like I want to make like a long polyform piece with like multiple phrases, multiple Stuff like this A, B section, A, A section, B section, A section, C section, D section, fucking, I don't know, fucking whatever section. Just uh, section doesn't even sound like a word anymore. And, <laughs> but no, you gotta make seven seconds loop, seven second loop. And it's refreshing, it's a good challenge, but I'm not used to it and it's messing me up, bro. <sighs> the struggles of video game composer. Now I really understand what Koji Gondo like. I don't really understand what Koji Gondo for it too, but I can now have a huge amount of respect for all video game composers since this is harder than I imagine. In so some respects, it's nicer that you are forced to work with limited material in s certain situations, like the mini music. You, you can't, you don't need to make it too long. But it also makes you have to make it not annoying when looped. Like not obnoxious, not taking too much like, like it has to be kind of like ambient music, interesting enough to be able to tune into if you want to, but not distracting enough so that it can't just be in the background. So yeah, that's the kind of things I've been struggling uh, with while composing these pieces for the video game. And there's certainly more to come, so if you find this video now. And you're like, hey, I missed the 
original uploaded video. Don't worry, the game is probably still in development. And there's, I'm gonna make these pieces and record these pieces for. Oh, this is gonna be a long project, even if the game finishes like today. It's gonna be a long time before I get all the musicians together to record all the acoustic versions of the pieces, the extended versions of the pieces, and it's just a whole ordeal. Anyway, enough about me. You know about this, you know about everything, I'm tired of talking. The struggles of video game composer, you get it, see ya.